Hey guys, so it is Sunday morning and I'm trying to go to this church like over here, but there's like a giant highway. I don't know if you see it. So I don't know how I'm supposed to get down there. <laughs> Cause I feel like it looks like there's a giant hill, but I don't know. <laughs> This will be an adventure. I was just having breakfast and I wanted to say several things. So first, I'm not 100% vegan and I'm probably gonna make a whole video about it, but I know that I call myself vegan and the reason is because I don't eat meat or animal products very often at all. I'm probably like 99% vegan at this point just because I always eat at home and I always buy my own food and everything. But when I travel, if I'm like deficient in protein or iron, I talked about this at the beginning of the video, but I feel so sick. I get like dizzy and like the founder of the animal rights movement, Peter Singer, does not eat vegan when he travels either. So that's my thing, like not being super legalistic about it, but oh wow, this is crazy. I don't know what to do. I need to get down here. Oh, this is like so sketchy. This is the most sketchy jaywalking I've ever done. Literally, it's like a highway. People see veganism as like super strict diet, and it is. And I don't keep it 100% of the time. Just because when I was vegetarian, I would eat meat a lot just because I was at college at the time. When I would only eat vegetarian, I was always iron deficient. And so I kind of decided with being vegan that it will work if I'm able to cheat whenever I need to. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you're considering going vegan, you don't have to go fully vegan. Go vegan like 80% of the time or like 50% of the time. Just like be vegan whenever you want to. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about was there was a terrorist attack in Egypt at Coptic churches, which are the original churches. And there were a lot of children who were murdered in the attack. They planted a bomb inside the church. And I know this is old news because you're watching this later, but I just read about it, I almost started crying. I was reading the news next to Revelation 4, which is the throne room passage, and as you guys know, last summer the terrorist attacks really, really affected me, and I kind of realized that this isn't all there is. Jesus solved the violence problem and the evil problem by coming to earth and showing us how to be fully human, how to forgive and have peace and love, and this world, <laughs> God's plan is not for this world, it's for heaven, it's for a new heaven and a new earth. When you read news stories of like horrible atrocities, evil happening, read it within the context of scripture and of the new creation which is going to happen. That's why I don't like when people say that God has a plan for everyone's life because God's plan was not for those children to be murdered at all. It's during Holy Week, Palm Sunday, it's absolutely evil and I hate it and it's awful and I was watching this Holocaust movie, I'll link it below with my parents the other day, and one of the things, they were kind of putting God on like the judgment stand. It's like kind of like a problem of evil philosophy movie, and what they ended up saying is that Jesus was with them in the concentration camp. He was there. And I think like with Orthodox as well, like part of their communion beliefs is like transubstantiation. Jesus is physically, literally there in the communion. And I think that's so powerful that during this evil, awful attack, it's like, where was God? Like Jesus is there, he's hurting with them. He's seeing what's happening and he's accepting these people into his kingdom right now. And yeah, but this world is not all there is. This world is evil, awful, and God's plan is for a different world and a different way of life. And we're already bringing the new kingdom to earth right now, but it's not a physical kingdom and it's a different type of power. All we can do is look at fundamentalism and legalism within our own religion, because right now, Muslims are being so attacked for their book being taken out of context, but with Christians, you know, we have genocide in our scripture, we have so much violence in our scripture, so it could easily be our religion next that's causing terrorist attacks, so I just think with religious dialogue within our own churches and with each other, we just need to be really, really peaceful and seek to read scripture in context. That's what all of this teaches me, just to be more humble and more open-minded, and just when I'm dialoguing with people, to not always think I'm right, but to really, really listen. Okay, I made it to the church, yay! Church of Christ. This is so cool, it's like right across from where my friend is working. It's so sad, Piper has to work and it's her birthday as well. This bathroom is so cute. Okay, look at my outfit. This shirt is a tank top from Forever 21 and it's like freezing and it's just not modest. <laughs> So I have a sweater I'm wearing and then I just have these skinny jeans that are from rosegal.com 
And then these shoes are from Summer on Amazon. And yeah. And I even have my nails done, yay. You guys can see I'm wearing this <laughs> necklace, also from rosegal.com. Give me the food I need to live through the day. And forgive me as I forgive the people that wrong me. Leave me far from Tim. Hey guys! So I wanted to vlog again. I just got out of church and it was absolutely amazing and I was crying but like good crying because oh, I have so much to say. So first of all, if you're Church of Christ, you'll understand this. So at this church, they sing, so, they sing the verses one, two, three, and four instead of just one, two, and four, which was crazy. <laughs> so comment below if you understand what that means. And uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, is this lighting better? I haven't been to Church of Christ in like, probably like five months or something just because the churches of Christ in Florida are like I don't know like different like really really legalistic and kind of conservative so I've just been going to other types of churches in my hometown but I grew up Church of Christ so I love Church of Christ and just going back and like the songs I grew up with and just the style of worship everything it just feels like going home and it's so cool being Church of Christ because I go into the church and we know a ton of people. They know people I know from like Thailand, you know what I mean? Like we have so many like mutual connections from Pepperdine everywhere. Like we just know each other because it's only like 4 million Church of Christ people in the world. So every Church of Christ I go to, we know a ton of mutual friends. It's so cool. You just immediately feel like family. So that was really, really cool. And I met this woman there who I feel like I've been praying for a mentor for like two years. Like my junior year of college, I was praying so hard for a mentor and I feel like I finally found her. She's just amazing and she understands my mental illness. Like I was talking to her about it and we talked through the, I told her how I felt about the bombing as well. Just cause like I started crying at the end of the church cause they read this passage from Revelation. I want to read it for you guys. They read a passage from Revelation 6 and I was reading Revelation this morning but this passage is even more applicable and it was so powerful. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the people slaughtered because of God's word and the testimony they had. They cried out with a loud voice, Lord, the one who is holy and true, how long until you judge and avenge our blood from those who live on the earth? So a white robe was given to each of them, and they were told to rest a little while longer until the number would be completed of their fellow slaves and their brothers who were going to be killed just as they had been. God is so angry. God's so angry that they planted the bomb and that they killed these people, but they're with God in heaven right now. And that's what I was talking about with this woman who I said, I feel like I prayed like two years ago for like a mentor for someone. Just, I don't know, we just connected so well emotionally and she just told me that she can tell I have like such a tender heart and that I just feel for everyone and she said I need to just protect myself against Satan trying to attack that. Think of it as like I will be attacked spiritually because of my empathy and Satan will try to use that to tear me away from God but I have to protect myself with spiritual armor and see it as spiritual warfare. So crazy, before she said that I was reading like the past two or three days, the, pa the Bible verses I've been reading, I've been reading through the beginning of Hebrews and then like before church started and like this morning when I was at breakfast, I kept reading like three different verses that were talking about like protect yourself spiritually, protect yourself spiritually. And oh, it's almost like God was preparing me for this. Like before I got the notification of the shooting, I was reading several passages about like protecting yourself, making sure to not lose the faith. And then she told me the same thing. And so I don't know, this, ha this is what I talked about in my like times God has intervened in my life video where sometimes it'll be like the same theme. God is like telling me something. So that was just something I've heard today so many times that it's so typical for Satan to try to use things to tear us away from God. And we have to be on it and like ahead of time be protecting our, like there were kids sitting in front of me. And I remember just thinking, you know, someone went, went into the church and planted the bomb and the kids were sitting in the front rows and they were some of the people who were killed, like these children. And I was just imagining how could anyone but what this woman kept reminding me is that they're with God right now. Like they're with God right now. And Jesus is embracing them and they're getting to worship God fully. But the man at the end who was reading this verse, he just said, I hate when things like this happen and I, I hate it because I don't understand it. And that just fits really well with everything I concluded last summer. I don't understand why this evil and suffering happens, but in the scripture, we see all these instances of people being persecuted for God and 
we see that this isn't the end. Everything going on on this earth, this is not the last say. There's so much more and God will bring about an ultimate justice <laughs> and an ultimate salvation and Jesus is the resurrection. These people are alive. They were murdered, they were killed in these bombings and these terrorist attacks, but they're alive right now. They're living in there with God in the throne room and ugh. But I'm gonna go to Starbucks and I'm gonna work on my writing for, I'm writing a memoir about bipolar. So for sure buy it <laughs> when it gets published later this year. But um, I'm still kind of in the, I'm probably gonna be working on like contacting a publisher probably within the next couple weeks just cause I have so much written out. Some sort of car shop, I guess. <laughs> Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, look at these trees. They're so beautiful. Everywhere I go in her city, there are these like purple. <laughs> I'm like not good at filming. I don't know how I'm a YouTuber. I can't even like hold a camera straight. <laughs> Two are the same. I wanna be like. Better that you rip, rip, break me down.